Hi everyone and welcome to uh, Hydrogen Home. It's been a really long time since I posted any videos. Um, about a year and a half, I think. Um, I kind of stopped doing it for a while. I had a couple of things happen. Um, uh, one, I lost a really good friend to a motorbike accident, uh, which was pretty bad, as you can imagine. And also, um, I had a lot of videos taken off my site and used to sell some really bad quality hydrogen gear. Which, uh, yeah, just killed my buzz. And um, so I haven't done it. Uh, lately I've been getting into some other stuff, uh, you can see behind me, I've been uh, getting back into some old hobbies I did when I was younger, some planes and boats and cars and stuff, and that's helped me getting back into doing things again, and um, thought I'd go back to some of the hydrogen stuff I did and do some conclusions that I never did to my last few videos, and also build a unit that uh, I always wanted to build, I've already started doing it, so I'll show you that as well. So yeah, I'm going to take you outside now and show you the last thing I was doing um, before I stopped, and then uh, take it from there. Alright, so this is the last thing I was working on. Um, it's basically my old container, which has been split up into six separate chambers. And then I've got two plates in each. And then it's uh, it's wired up in series, so um, the power comes in here and then goes across and then back out. Um, it was running off about 14 volts. So I was getting, you know, about 2.5 volts between each plate gap, which is what you want. Um, it worked pretty well, it was quite stable, um, and I got about 5 MMW out of it, which I was happy with. Um, I'm not going to go with this design anymore, um, there's just too many things I don't like about it. Hooking it up can be a real problem, it's been leaking as you can see, I'm, I'm not real keen on any glued joins like that. So um, I'm going to stick to not doing this kind of design, but I do like the way it's set up in series, that is good. Alright, one of the other things I wanted to talk about was a conclusion that um, is a bit of a long time coming. Uh, it goes back to experiments that myself and a lot of other people were doing ages ago um, with cells like this. Um, in particular in an open bath situation and trying to figure out the difference between running either with or without neutral plates and what that difference is. Um, the fact is that they were both very inefficient for two extremely different reasons. Um, First of all, take the example of using a system with no neutral plates. That is, a cell like this wired up positive, negative, positive, negative, all the way across. Now, that's extremely inefficient because you've still got that full voltage of, you know, 13 odd volts, if you're working off that kind of voltage, in between each, each gap in each plate, which is very inefficient. Um, it's efficient because uh, there's no voltage leakage from one side to the other. Um, that's not a problem with this kind of cell. Uh, now you switch to a system with neutral plates. Uh, once again, using 13 volt volts, you want to have about five or so gaps. And you've got positive and negative on the outside and then all neutrals in between. That's extremely inefficient because of the voltage leakage going across from one side to the other and through the plates. Uh, it's efficient because you've got that, you know, two and a half odd volts in between each gap. So there you go two very different reasons why both these setups were very inefficient. Um, it's a bit of a sort of a, a der kind of thing now, it's like, of course, but uh, it was really kind of a head scrambler for quite a while there. So yeah, I just wanted to say that and get it out there, and uh, we'll talk about some other stuff. Alright, now I've already showed you this uh, setup here. The other type of setup you've seen me use is this sandwich type setup, which is um, the one I'm going to be using for my next electrolyzer. I've already been working on the plates. I've already made 60 of these plates, which is how many this is going to have in it. Uh, as you can imagine, it took quite a while to cut and drill them all. Uh, the biggest thing I like the most about it, this setup is the fact that you can wire up so closely to the plate and really solidly with a proper bolt. Um, that, above any other reason, is the main thing that I like about this unit. Also, that it can be pulled apart and cleaned really easily. And yeah, I'll show you some more of this uh, once it gets built. Okay, I also wanted to talk about different voltages. Um, now I'm using 13 odd volts for most of my experiments, 13, 14 volts. Um, and I'm going to stick to that for now, mainly because it's going to be a lot less work to build the unit I want using those voltages, um, plus it's a little bit safer. But it's important to understand why um, a lot of people do use higher voltages. And uh, it's mainly because it's a lot easier to push volts into a setup than it is to do it with amps. Um, it's also easy to get converters and inverters and stuff that can handle uh, high volts but low amps. 
uh, as opposed to getting a system that does low volts and high amps. So that's a, that's a couple of the reasons why um, people do do that. Um, you still need to have a lot of plates because you still want to get down to that two and a half volts between each gap. But um, it is possibly a lot easier to get more gas out of the system that way. Uh, I'm hopefully going to try and get away with that just by having a lot more plates and uh, I'll worry about the power supply later. But, uh, but yeah, it was worth talking about. Um, another thing I wanted to bring up was uh, running these things on cars. Um, now, after everything I've seen and all the stuff I've done, I personally am not going to go down that direction. Um, I don't really see it as being completely viable. Um, I don't want to go on too much because I don't want to start a fight with anybody because I know it's a very touchy subject for some people. But, uh, but yeah, I'm not really going to go down that path. I may try running it on a lawnmower motor at some stage if I can get enough gas, you know. But uh, that's about it for that kind of stuff. Um, it's not a dead end project though, uh, even though I don't see it as being used in cars in that way. Um, there's still a lot of very useful things that can be done with this stuff and it's still worth looking into. Um, the biggest reason I can sort of think of and have seen out there is as an alternative to batteries. Um, it's important to, no, to sort of realise that these are not free energy devices. They're more like a converter or an inverter, just taking one type of energy to another type of energy. Um, now, it can be useful, like the battery kind of way, because it can take things like power from solar and wind and whatnot, and then turn them into the gas, uh, and then be used to either burn or be turned back into electricity via a, um, a power cell, a fuel cell. And um, now things like storage and um, uh, can be a bit of an issue, and splitting the gas can be a bit of an issue, even though it can be done, you can split the hydrogen from the oxygen. Um, so yeah, it still has some, some real merits in that way and it's worth looking into for those reasons. Um, you know, plus there's other things that can be used as a burning tool, which is one thing I'd really like to have because it's, um, there's no fumes. And, um, you know, I'm sure there's a, a bunch of other things, you know, that, that could be used for, you know, uh, heating and whatnot. And uh, plus, you know, for me it's just a hobby, so it doesn't really need to have much of a reason. Uh, I just enjoy doing it. And, uh, and so yeah, we'll... Uh, get stuck into this new cell and uh, I'll get back to you and show you where I'm up to. Alright, take care.